Hello, my dear science nerds, and welcome to my channel Let's Chemistry. The materials presented in this video are only for educational purposes. I'm excited to start experimenting with vanillin demethylation reaction. This time I have everything ready. I have learned on the Science Madness Forum from the cyclonite that US patent 2975214 is worth trying. The reason why I like this method so much is that it doesn't require us to obtain anhydrous aluminum bromide, aluminum chloride or pyridine. In this preparation I actually need aluminum bromide, but in this case it is prepared in situ, which means in the reaction mixture. A few years ago I had tried vanillin demethylation twice with pyridine aluminum chloride combination and had got only 10% yield. Despite the inevitability of working with such harsh chemicals as bromine, this preparation is very interesting for me, considering my previous failed attempts. By the way, pyridine and aluminum chloride are not less dangerous chemicals than bromine. As I have said earlier, I'm following US patent 2975214. The theory behind the process is too complicated to explain here in details, but if anyone is interested, the patent is freely available on the internet. I will explain the main ideas simplified throughout the process of preparation. Ok, let's get started. Today on the table I have the following reactants. Aluminium powder 6.75 grams. As it is mentioned in the patent, the finest powder you can get the better. From our distant friend I have got pyrophoric plate powder. 19 grams of vanillin, 60 grams of bromine and benzene. At first I have to start with aluminium bromide formation by the reaction of bromine with aluminium in the presence of benzene. As I have learned from the patent, any of these compounds, such as benzene, toluene or xylene, are suitable for this reaction, because these compounds are able to form special complex. More details about complex formation mechanism and structure you can find in the patent. In general, these complexes are formed when bromine is reacted with aluminium in the presence of aryl halide. As it is mentioned in the patent, such complexes are more effective to demethylate vanillin than a mere solution of aluminium bromide. As promised, no more theory and let's start with complex formation. At first, I'm suspending aluminium powder in 250 milliliters of benzene and start bromine addition. The reaction is quite exothermic. I must maintain the temperature scope from 0 to 20 degrees Celsius because below 0 degrees the complex solidifies and reaction stops. The temperature above 20 degrees will cause the complex decomposition followed by hydrogen bromide evolution. This is the creepiest part of the reaction because adding bromine to the pyrophoric aluminum powder when suspended in benzene is not a game. You might have performed or have seen the reaction between aluminium and bromine followed by red fumes and ignited aluminium sparks flying in all directions. The benzene is the last thing you wish to have somewhere near there. But here I am, dripping bromine and controlling the temperature meticulously. In the beginning, the reaction takes some time to start, but as I am progressing with bromine addition, the temperature starts to climb up. The patent mentions that amalgamation of aluminium with hydrargyrum or copper salts helps a complex to be formed, but as I have got very fine powder I will try to skip this step. A few words about the apparatus. I'm using 500ml round button 3 necked flask. For the addition of bromine I'm using 500ml pressure equalized addition funnel. In the third neck I have inserted a thermometer adapter with connected tube going to the hole throughout the window. During the reaction, as a byproduct, methyl bromide is formed. At the beginning I was planning to collect this valuable organic substance, but condensation of liquid with such low boiling temperature requires much more efforts and I wasn't prepared for that. Maybe next time. Methyl bromide is a very toxic compound and concentrations above 1600 ppm are considered lethal, so sealed apparatus and good ventilation is mandatory. I always forget to mention that I am using a respirator in case of potential contact with such dangerous chemicals. At the end of the addition, for a few seconds temperature reaches 22 degrees. Mixtures start to boil and emit hydrobromic acid vapors. Clear sign of complex decomposition. But I have managed to cool the flask down below 20 degrees again. For the next time I will prepare more ice before adding bromine. 
After bromine addition, liquid has turned transparent pinkish in color. Now I'm ready to add vanillin. According to patent, 19 grams of vanillin must be dissolved in 75 grams of nitrobenzene. As far as I'm using benzene instead of nitrobenzene, the solubility of vanillin decreases and requires more benzene to be fully dissolved. Instead of using additional solvent, I have decided to heat benzene to boiling temperature. Near the boiling point temperatures, solubility of vanillin increases and little more benzene is required to fully dissolve vanillin. After that, I place the hot concentrated solution to the addition funnel and start dropwise addition. And again, the temperature must not exceed 20 degrees Celsius. In spite of keeping the addition of hot liquid, the process is not that exothermic and the reaction temperature is easy to control. Vanillin solution drops are changing in color to yellow and then right after touching reaction mixture into gray. The addition goes smoothly. In the end, gray viscous liquid is formed in the reaction flask. Good steering is absolutely necessary. You must have a very strong magnetic or overhead steerer to steer the reaction mixture. I'm steering the reaction mixture at 20 degrees Celsius for one hour. After that, I change the setup and add condenser on the third neck. At the end of the condenser, I connect the same tube going to the window outside. Now I'm going to heat the reaction mixture to 90 degrees Celsius in the course of an hour and then at 100 degrees for another hour. Okay, I'm halfway done. Now I need to cool the reaction flask down and decompose the formed complex with water to recover our desired product. The patent calls for a kilogram of ice, but as I have noticed, complex decomposition is not that exothermic, so I have just used one liter cold distilled water. You can see how the complex behaves when it gets in contact with the water surface. Now I decant the whole beaker into the large separation funnel. But there are a lot of unreacted aluminum particles in the organic phase and I decided to filter it. I'm using vacuum filtration for this. The filtered solution is free of aluminum and phases separate in the filtration flask. I move filtrate to the separation funnel again. At first I have to work up the water phase. I have saved the organic phase and starting extraction of the water phase with 35-40 ml of DCM three times. Each time the phases separate nicely without any problems. I'm drying combined extract with magnesium sulfide. Filter with gravity filtration to the beaker. I will, I will store it in the freezer until tomorrow. After finishing the water phase extraction, I move to the organic phase. I have prepared 375 milliliters of a 4% solution of sodium hydroxide. The organic phase must be extracted with 125 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution three times. On the first wash, the separation of the phases took a whole night. In the second day, liquids were perfectly separated. The second and third washes are not that time consuming, but still they take a few hours to be separated. After finishing water phase extraction, the most interesting part comes, because I'm going to find out the preliminary results of our work. I have to acidify our water extracts with hydrochloric acid until pH is slightly acidic. Every drop of the acid causes massive crystal evolution and it is a good sign. When no more crystals form, and pH is slightly acidic, I stop acid addition. Now I cover the flask and place it to the fridge overnight. On the next day, the flask is full of nice yellow brownish crystals. I'm going to filter mother liquor with a vacuum. Here we are left with crude protocatahuic aldehyde on the filter. I'm drying it for 15 minutes with vacuum running. Now I need to proceed further and extract the mother liquor three times with 30 milliliters of DCM. Now I'm going to combine DCM extracts obtained yesterday with the recent mother liqueur extracts. I dry DCM with magnesium sulfate and filter with gravity filtration to the evaporation flask. Now it is ready to be evaporated in a rotary evaporator.
After stripping off the solvent, I have placed the leftover liquid to the crystallization dish. Very soon, liquid solidifies with crystals. Combined crude yield is 13.635 grams, which represents 78% of the theory. It is not bad to take into consideration that I'm doing this preparation for the first time and yield in the patent is 89%. Previous failed attempts of mine also makes me think that vanillin demethylation is no easy task and this method may be a viable way to achieve good results. I'm quite happy with the results, but as far as we've seen after the complex decomposition some of the unreacted aluminium, maybe it would be better to do amalgamation as patent recommended. What do you think? Subscribe, left comments and stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching.